Many people often struggle with not having enough storage and often delete unwanted data. However, what happens when you've deleted everything you don't need, but you still haven't got enough storage? Well, many buy a large capacity SSD, but the last thing you want to do is download and reinstall all of your data as well as the OS. Well, I'm going to go through how to clone your drive easily with a Cronus True Image. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Sabrent we love to make and talk tech. So if that's what you're into, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. There are many reasons why you might want to replace or change your drive to let's say one of our Sabrent SSDs. Let's say you are running a slower two and a half inch drive or even a mechanical hard drive and you are looking to decrease loading times for your games and applications. Well then switching to a Sabrent NVMe SSD is going to be a very good idea because you're going to be able to substantially increase your read and write speeds. Also if your drive is nearing the end of its health. For example, if you are someone who is a video editor or copies and transfers a lot of footage and files every day, then the terabytes written is close to failure. Then replacing the drive is a very good idea as you don't want to lose your valuable data due to a drive failure. Having to replace your drive no matter the reason means reinstalling Windows and all of your data. And no one wants to go through the hassle of reinstalling every single program you have. The simplest and fastest option for most people will be just to clone your drive. Now, there are a few things that you should know before cloning your drive. You can only make a clone of your drive if you use the same disk size or larger. For example, if your system has 512 gigabytes of NVMe storage installed, then you will need another 512 gigabyte NVMe drive or larger to clone the data successfully. Most people who decide to clone their drive will either intend to keep it as a backup or migrate to an NVMe drive with more storage as more and more games and applications are becoming larger in file sizes, as well as your need for more data will most likely increase over the years. So it may be worth grabbing a larger drive if you're gonna be doing any cloning. If you try to do the opposite, well, you're going to be in for a bad time. Also, be aware, if you want to clone a disk with a Windows operating system, then that disk will only work with that computer or a PC with identical specifications. You also can't clone two smaller disks into one larger disk. This was also a common question we got. Another thing that you'll need to keep in mind while cloning using a Cronus True Image is that it can only clone basic disks. The software can't clone dynamic disk drives, so make sure you select the basic disk drive that you want to clone. You can check if your drive is dynamic or basic by using disk management. On the home screen of your Windows PC, press the Windows and X keys together and then click on disk management from the pop-up bar and then a new window will appear. Then at the bottom, you'll see all of the disks installed on your computer and underneath the disk number, you should see basic or dynamic. Okay, one last point I want to make so we cover all of the prerequisites is that you can only clone your source drive to the target drive if they have the same logical sector sizes. Now this isn't too important right now as we are using the recommended automatic settings for cloning but it is something I wanted to mention for those who want to use the manual cloning features of a Cronus True Image. To check your drive sector size follow these steps. On the home screen you want to press Windows and R together to to launch the run program. Then type this into the run application and click OK. Navigate to components and then expand the option and then expand the storage option and then click on the disk tab. Here it will display your drive sector size in the byte slash sector line. Now that we have gone through and understood all of the prerequisites, it's time to clone your drive using a Cronus True image. A Cronus True image comes with all of our Sabrent Rocket NVMe SSDs and some of of our enclosures too. So it's a fantastic premium software that we are giving to you guys for free. Also, if you pick up one of our enclosures like our Sabrent Tool Free NVMe USB enclosure, then you can actually use a non-Sabrent SSD to clone to make it super flexible for you guys. Now to clone your disk, make sure that you either have two M.2 NVMe slots or a PCIe NVMe card, one with the drive that you want copying and then the other with the target drive. Or if you're using something like a laptop, then you can pick up one of our enclosures that I've just mentioned 
second and install your new NVMe drive and then clone your SSD from your laptop to the new drive. If you want, you can even use two of these enclosures to clone from one disk to another. Now that we have prepped your system for the cloning process, let's show you how to use a Cronus True image. Firstly, you want to download and install a Cronus True image on your system. I'll leave a link in the description where you can download it from our website. After installing, launch the application and click on Tools from the sidebar. Then click on Clone Disk from the options displayed, and then the Clone Wizard will give you two two options to select from. Automatic mode is where Acronis will automatically adjust the partitions and settings to fit your new NVMe drive, or manual mode where Acronis will let you decide how you want to adjust the partitions and settings to fit your existing data into the new NVMe drive. Here we're going to select automatic and then press next. Here at the Source Disk Setup page, you want to select the disk that you want to clone from the list of drives and then click Next. Now you need to select the destination disk that you want to store all of your clone data to. Acronis will automatically detect unpartitioned disks, so select the right disk and then press Next. Now you'll see an option where it will say Disk Usage, and this will go through the required cloning methods. So the first option is to replace a disk on the machine that you're using at the moment. Then you can also have an option, which is where you can select another machine for the SSD to be installed into, or you can use this disk as a data disk. So select the relevant method and then click next. Now you're at the finishing screen. You want to check all of the details and then press proceed if they are all correct. The cloning process will start. The setup may take some time depending on your data volume, so be patient and make sure that you are using a laptop that is plugged in and any automatic shutdown processes are turned off. After the cloning process completes, a prompt will show you the next steps that you'll need to take. If you decide to increase your storage space without losing your installed applications and data, you can install your clone drive into your computer and make it your primary bootable drive. Here are the steps that you should follow. First, you want to turn off your system. Then open up your computer to access the drive slots. If your system contains two NVMe slots, you can leave the older NVMe inserted into your system and then just change the boot order. But just be aware that on some motherboards, the top NVMe slot is the fastest NVMe slot. So just look up the specs of your motherboard, otherwise you could be losing out on some performance. If this is the case, then replace the old drive with your new clone drive, and then you can insert the old drive into the other NVMe slot that is available. However, I would recommend you remove the original drive to start with and then format that drive afterwards. Now just put the panel back on and start up your system. Depending on the manufacturer, you want to either press F2, FA, F11, or even the delete key to enter the BIOS. Navigate to the boot menu and make sure that your new drive is the primary boot drive. Your system will now boot from that clone drive and you can format your old drive and use it as a secondary disk or backup disk if you like. A question that we got was that if you are cloning from a smaller drive to a larger drive, will it show up as the size of the original drive? And the answer is no. Acronis is smart enough that it will extend this to the larger drive size, giving you the larger storage amount that is available to you. No extending the partition on the drive after the fact, unlike a lot of other less capable cloning software. So if you ended up playing around with the settings in the manual mode instead of using the recommended automatic mode, the chances of running into cloning issues can be a bit higher. Here are some of the common mistakes and issues that you should keep in mind before opting for the manual method. Boot issues can arise due to corrupted files in the source disk that Acronis has copied to the clone, and it can even mess up the boot data as well. So what you should do is run a check using Dispart in the command prompt to remove and rectify any corrupted files in the source disk, and then select the automatic mode to ensure that there are no issues with the partition while the cloning process has begun. This conflict often arises when the user mistakenly copies an MBR NVMe drive to a GPT NVMe and the system fails to boot from the new NVMe drive. 
If this happens, then what you need to do is change the boot mode from legacy to UEFI or vice versa to detect the other partition scheme. If your system does not support different boot modes, you may not be able to boot from your clone drive at all. You will have to format the drive, change the partition scheme, and then reclone the drive. Additional M.2 slots on laptops and PCs can fail to detect the new NVMe drive due to dust or just a fault in the port itself. What you should try using is something like a PC blower to get rid of any dust that might be present in that port before inserting any new drives into that slot. However, if the port fails to detect your new drive, then there might be a fault with the slot itself and you might have no choice but to use only one NVMe slot at a time or you can either take the motherboard to a repair center or replace the motherboard entirely. Some systems come with secure boot enabled that does not allow the user to change the boot order. First, you need to disable secure boot from the system configuration before you can change the boot order if that's what you want to do and then select your clone drive NVMe as the boot drive. Most cloning softwares are notorious for imprinting the unique ID of the source disk to the clone disk as well. This mistake often confuses the boot manager in differentiating between the two drives. However, luckily a Cronus does not imprint the unique ID to the clones. So your boot manager can easily distinguish between the drive when you opt for the two drive option. Hence why we love a Cronus. And there you have it. We've gone through how to use a Cronus True Images cloning feature, as well as some tricks and tips so that you will have the best experience possible using it. I really hope that you found this video helpful and if you did then please make sure to smash that like button and leave a comment down below. Also make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. Anyway thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>